Now, the rest of the story. Among fellow journalists, foreign correspondent Georgie Ann Geyer is a much respected colleague. In 1970, she was a stranger in paradise. It was her first visit to the Galapagos Islands, and Georgie Ann was enchanted by their beauty. But there was something about the Galapagos even more fascinating than their topographical splendor. The fact that the animals on those islands, 600 miles west of Ecuador, had no apparent fear of people. Exotic birds would perch cheerfully on tourists' shoulders. Iguanas calmly ate out of their hands. Sea lions frolicked and swam with them in the placid lagoons. These creatures of the Galapagos had never known humans as predators, and consequently, they were not treated as such. Well, Georgie Ann felt as though somehow she'd been transported to the original Eden, to a tiny corner of the world which was as the rest of the world was intended to be. Ms. Geyer had been told what to expect, and yet she was unprepared for her emotional reaction, for the, for the sheer exhilaration of communing with other beings on such an intimate level. The animal's trust was extraordinary. As Georgie Ann strolled the beaches, birds would stroll alongside her or actually land on her head for a ride. She petted the friendly iguanas. She swam with the baby sea lions. For three days, she lived as close to heaven as earth can bring one. But this is the rest of the story. There are 13 islands in the Galapagos chain, and on the fourth day of Georgie Ann's vacation, she visited beautiful James Island. It was a geographically diverse place. Some areas were lush with tropical foliage. Others were gray and forbidden and laden with lava rock. The beaches of James Island were among the most stunning and picturesque anywhere, and animal life was plentiful. There were masses of marine iguanas and crabs and pelicans and penguins and flamingos, and yet... Perhaps the most celebrated animal resident of James Island were the furred sea lions which languished amid the spectacular black lava formations on the west coast. When Ms. Geyer arrived, she and a young American scientist from a local research station went out to visit the sea lions. And yet much to the journalist's surprise and disappointment, when the great creature saw her coming, they fled in apparent terror. Georgie Ann turned to her companion. Why, she asked, were these animals afraid while similar ones on the other island were not? Well, the scientist hesitated as though he would have preferred not to answer. James Island, he explained, was the only one on which hunting had been permitted. And while hunting was now outlawed, the animals were still gun shy. Well, foreign correspondent Georgie Ann Geyer has been all over the globe. She's heard a lot, and yet nothing so indelibly etched in her memory as what you're about to learn. Somehow, some way, on that island east of Eden, the animals we used to call dumb know so much and remember more. In generation to generation communication that nobody really understands, the creatures of James Island have passed along information, a permanent warning for their mutual benefit. For the animals of the Galapagos flee from people only on James Island, even though hunting is strictly forbidden there. But on that one island, they somehow recall the hunters who were there. Two hundred years ago? And now you know the rest of the story.